Coming up, countdown to 2023. The new year is almost here. What you need to know about this holiday and another one many families are celebrating this week. Then a book and a smile. This girl wants to change the world one book at a time. My goal is one million books to one million kids. Plus meet Boone, the hero dog who is capturing America's hearts, bow tie and all. Also, game on. This sport is sweeping the country and it's not just for grown-ups. Pickleball. You just gotta hit it over the net so it's a really fun and easy sport. Just what is pickleball? We have the answers. And one 12 year old is cleaning up the beaches one bottle and can at a time. If no one picked that stuff up, what could happen to it? That could go into the ocean and harm an animal like a sea turtle. His inspiring message just ahead. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you guys. I'm coming to you again this week from Universal Studios Hollywood here in California. Always fun to be in this part of the country. I hope you're all enjoying the holiday break and had a nice Christmas. On this special Kids Edition program, we're going to take a look at a few of the stories we brought you this past year, including a couple of our inspiring kids, plus one four-legged friend who is bringing smiles to the faces of many travelers. But first, we know Christmas was just a few days ago. Meanwhile, there's another holiday taking place this week, and it's one some of you may not know too much about. Kwanzaa is a non-religious holiday that begins the day after Christmas. Our friend Rahema Ellis explains. Kwanzaa is an annual holiday celebrating African-American culture and heritage. Created in the 1960s, it was inspired by harvest festivals across the continent of Africa. For seven days, from December 26 to January 1st, communities gather to commemorate the seven principles of Kwanzaa, like Umoja, which means unity, or Kumba, which means creativity. Family and friends light a candle each night on the Kinara and celebrate with feast, music, dance, art, and poetry. My actual favorite part is connecting with your family and friends that you haven't been with. The name comes from the Swahili phrase, Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which means first fruits or first harvest. But it enables us to bring our elders together, bring uh, important members of the community come through. We get to break bread and share food and laughter and story, really talk story, which is the main thing that, that is, that's really wonderful. For millions across the globe, it's a time to honor their African roots while celebrating family, community, and culture, coming together in the spirit of Kwanzaa. Rahema, thanks so much. Meantime, 2023 is almost here. And in case you're wondering which country will be the first to ring in the new year, well, the island nation Kiribati, located in the Central Pacific, will be the first country to ring in 2023, while American Samoa will be one of the last places to ring in the new year. And did you know some countries have certain customs for ringing in the new year? The Dutch supposedly believe eating donuts on New Year's Day will bring good luck. That sounds good to me. Well, let's head now to Texas for a story we brought you back in February about one girl's mission to strengthen ties in her community as she hopes to inspire others with a book and a smile. Nine-year-old Chloe Joyner is on a mission to change the world one book at a time. Now my goal is one million books to one million kids. She put out a call for books, and people are delivering. More books! Wow. Oh. <gasps> Piles of books are everywhere in their home. We have them in the garage, we have them in the dining room, we have them in the washroom as well. We have them in a lot of places. All types of books. What really matters? I like this one because it has a very powerful message about climate change. From hardback books. This one, it's about all the different people that are inspiring. To chapter books. I like these books. They're my favorite. I love this book. Oh, I like this one as well. I like funny books. <laughs> and gently used books, all to give away and turn a new page in another child's life. The year we learned to fly. During Black History Month, Chloe collected and gave away books about cultural diversity. My goal was a thousand diversity books 
and um, we definitely reached that by now. I want other people to be able to put themselves in someone else's shoes and know how it's like so they can start helping. Chloe's helping story began when she met Officer Jessica Berry in their hometown of Missouri City, Texas. And they are still friends <laughs> to this day. She saw Officer Berry with her long red braid giving a ticket. It made Chloe afraid. So she and her grandmother came up with an idea. We could give books to the police officers so that they could give it to kids when they pull over their parents. And that's how it started. You know, we have had lots of things that have happened in our world, but there, there are lots of good police officers there. And Officer Barry definitely is at the top of my list. Chloe used her very own money to buy those first books. I used all my quarters that I've been saving up just since like a year or something, and it all summed up to a total of $150. Now with the help of community donations, Chloe also gives books to schools, homeless shelters, and hospitals. She even holds pop-up events. Books are like a dose of medication. You know, it's kind of like a, you can kind of go wherever you need to go. And when they have the tools to be able to go somewhere else for a minute, to just kind of escape that reality, I mean, it can really change your life. Here I come. Where do I put it? On a warm February Sunday, <laughs> three generations of Chloe's family set up their latest pop-up book giveaway. These are easy to read right here. New friends came. I'm nine. I'm eight. And What's old friends. What about I can read? And even the mayor. This is a nine-year-old that's you know, set out there to make a positive changes in our community. I think Chloe is going to open up the eyes of lots of children to realize I can figure out what I can do to help our world. I just have to just get started somewhere. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. With everybody helping, I feel like I'm definitely going to re reach my goal. Her goal? A million books for a million kids. The latest chapter in Chloe Joyner's story on giving. Chloe, it's really wonderful what you're doing. Thank you. Well, throughout the year, we have introduced you to several four-legged friends who have been supporting kids and grown-ups, making them smile and just feel good. One of those animals is a dog by the name of Boone. Details now from our friend Kristen Dahlgren. In the midst of the holiday travel rush, some relief on two wheels and two paws. Let's go this way, come on. A very special dog named Boone. When Boone goes to the airport, he really gets a lot of attention with, um, because of his wheelchair. He gets a lot of questions and kids like him because it's eye level with them a lot. He brings out a lot of the kids in everybody whenever they see him. Boone was rescued after being abused. His handler, Tanya, says they couldn't save his legs, but they did fit him with a wheelchair. His injuries haven't stopped Boone from bringing big smiles to everyone he meets. He loves to be around people. We knew automatically that he was going to be a therapy dog because he was so calm and he literally had so much patience with everything that I had to deal with him, with his medical care. First, Boone started helping kids at school. Then during the pandemic, began raising spirits and lowering stress at the airport. Boone is part of our Pit Pause program. Pause stands for Pups Alleviating Worry and Stress, and that's exactly what they do here at the airport. It's not just the wheels or those puppy dog eyes. Boone's appeal may also have something to do with the bow ties. Boone has over 400, so he always looks doggone good. Boone even has a trading card and a coloring book called Bowtie Boone. And now he also has a prestigious award as the American Hero Dog. He's just an amazing little guy who overcame unspeakable cruelty as a puppy. And despite only having two legs, has gone on to be an incredible therapy dog for people and animals in need just spreading his joy and his love. So Boone was a winner of his therapy category, and then he went on to become the overall American Humane Hero Dog of the Year. Boone's mission is truly 100% to show people how he is so resilient and, and how no matter what happens in life and to you and through you, that you can't overcome it. And uh, no matter what your disability is, 
it is, uh, it's okay. You can still achieve so many things. All right, Kristen, thank you so much. Now to a sport that is sweeping the country. It may have a funny name, but pickleball is the name of the game these days, and both kids and grown-ups alike are loving it. Our friend Savannah Sellers brings us details. It's a sport that has exploded here at home. Pickleball. That's right, pickleball. And it's not just for grown-ups. I came out one day and then I was like, I'm not gonna like this, you know. This is for older people. <laughs> a lot of younger people are now coming out. Pickleball is when you pick a racket and then you hit it to the other person. Anybody can play. It doesn't matter by your age, even if you're very old or very young. Yes, kids are grabbing their paddles to play ball. How old were you when you first played pickleball? Great. You just gotta hit it over the net, so it's a really fun and easy sport. The fact that it's so fast paced at the net and the games go by pretty quick, it just keeps your attention, which I think appeals to a lot of young people as well. So what exactly is pickleball? Pickleball is a game that is played on a court that looks similar to a tennis court that has been shrunk in a great deal. The game is played with solid paddles and a wiffle ball. Pickleball is a mix between like tennis and ping pong almost, and then just like some more rules added onto it. Did you know pickleball started in Washington State back in the 1960s when some kids were bored on summer break so their parents improvised? Their parents had a badminton court at their cottage and they went around and found some scrap pieces, lowered the net, cut out some paddles that looked like ping pong paddles, and borrowed a kid's wiffle ball and that was how the game started. Where did the name come from? There are no pickles involved. There are two different stories for how the game got its name. The cutest possible story is that the people that developed the game had a dog named Pickles, and Pickles kept running and grabbing the ball, and that's how they named it Pickleball. The other story involves a boat. Nobody knows for sure which one is true, but nevertheless, the name stuck and Pickleball was born. So kids were, had something to do, staying healthy and active, and it's evolved from there. Now, Pickleball courts are popping up across the country. I mean, the pandemic definitely helped because we were all looking for any way <laughs> whatsoever to kind of get out of the house and play a sport. And really why people love it so much, it's multi-generational. So you can go out and play and you can find courts to play anywhere around the United States. So it's a very inexpensive sport too to get all ages playing. Players say the game is pretty easy to learn. It's a great sport. A lot of the people are really friendly when you play pickleball. It's just a pickup sport. Kids can learn to play pickleball in about 30 minutes. You don't get tired and it's a fast game. Start playing and have fun. And having fun is the number one rule to remember when it comes to playing pickleball. That was a good shot. Definitely go for it. There's a lot of rules, but you'll get the hang of it after a couple times you play. Be a fair like teammate to your other teammate and make sure be a good sport and don't get so mad at the other team if you didn't do something right. Because you learn from your own mistakes. We love pickleball! Savannah, thanks. Maybe I'll give pickleball a try in 2023. Well, finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, a story we brought you back in April about one boy from here in Southern California who was helping to save the planet one piece of plastic at a time. Ryan Hickman's love of recycling started early. Well, when I was three and a half, my dad took me to the local recycling center for the first time, and I just really liked it, and I just wanted to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. The 12-year-old from Southern California has been picking up trash for nearly all his life. And while he may have started small, he's now making a big impact. So you asked your neighbors, so you would knock on their door and get their items? Uh, and then they would tell their friends, and then their friends, and then their friends, and now it's just really big. These days, Ryan travels the globe and hosts cleanup events that draw hundreds of people. So far, he's helped recycle more than 1.5 million cans and bottles, adding up to more than 160,000 pounds. Does it blow your mind how much trash and, and recyclable materials can be found on a beach like this? Yes, it does. 
It's sad that people don't pick up after themselves. Just pick it up. It's really easy. I do it all the time. When people come out with you on your recycling days, do they get excited about this? Do they start wanting to do this on a regular basis? If they come out, then they get inspired by me, then they keep doing this and picking up as much trash as possible. As I soon found out with Ryan, there's no such thing as an ordinary walk on the beach. You have a sharp eye. <laughs> Now. Along the water in Santa Monica, we cleaned up all sorts of litter. I see something down there. Including lots of plastic. This can't be good for animals. According to the United Nations, one million plastic bottles are purchased every minute, and five trillion plastic bags are used across the globe every year. In total, half of all plastic that's produced is single use. That means it's used one time and then thrown away. And that throwaway plastic can end up in the ocean, where it threatens all types of wildlife. If no one picked that stuff up, what could happen to it? That could go into the ocean and harm an animal. Like a sea turtle could think this is a jellyfish and eat it, and then die. That's why Ryan has also partnered with the Pacific Marine Mammal Center. Some of them eat plastic, some of them are just like injured, like shark attacks. Which helps rescue and rehabilitate seals, sea lions, and other marine mammals. You know, on our program, we feature a lot of kids like you who see a need and they do something about it. They don't wait, you know, for adults. They decide to do it for themselves. What advice do you have for kids who want to make a difference? If a 12-year-old kid like me could do it, anybody can. It's really easy. I started when I was three. So you just identify a passion and you do yep. it. Yeah. A determined young man fighting for a cleaner ocean and a greener future, one bottle at a time. Ryan, you are a man on a mission, and I applaud you. Great work, my friend. Well, that's going to do it for us here at Universal Studios Hollywood. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. We'll see you next year. Happy New Year.